Hi there, Aaron here, your friendly neighborhood meteorologist, and I'm back today to answer your questions about the weather. You may have noticed I haven't posted a lot of videos during the month of June, and that's because I took a little bit of a vacation, but I'm rested and ready to get cracking again on Weather 101. So I thought I'd start the month of July off with a question that people ask me a lot. How do we forecast the weather? But before we get started with how we forecast the weather, let's talk a little bit about the different types of forecasting that we do. The first type of forecasting that most meteorologists do on an everyday basis is called short-term forecasting. And sometimes you'll hear us refer to this as now casting. And basically this means what's happening or what's going to happen in the very near future. So this talks a little bit about uh, things like uh, storms, which direction storms are going to move, uh, what type of weather can uh, people experience under the storm as it moves over their area, uh, how soon will storms start to develop, um, how quickly will the temperature drop, when will the rain change over to snow or sleet, Things like that. The second type of forecasting that most meteorologists do is called long-term forecasting. And as the name would suggest, we're talking about things that will happen or could happen in the next four days, in the next five days, in the next seven, in the next 10 days. So that extended forecast that you see at the end of every weather cast on television, that's a long-term forecast. But we can go even longer than that. The National Center for Environmental Prediction does a uh, three-month outlook for um, seasonal temperature and uh, precipitation trends. So uh, we're talking about a very long, long-term, or it can be a little bit of a shorter long-term forecast. So now let's talk about what each of these types of forecasting require to create a reliable weather prediction for you. For a short-term forecast, most meteorologists are gonna use real-time data. So we're gonna look at the current temperature and which direction it's headed, the current barometric pressure, and whether it's rising or falling. We're gonna look at the dew point, whether that's rising or falling. We're gonna look at uh, the current radar image and interpret which direction the storms are moving. We're going to look at a satellite image and try to figure out which direction the front is going to move. So we use real-time data to create a very short-term forecast. So for the next 12 or 24 hours, this is what we think is going to happen. So for long-term forecasting, we rely heavily on computer models. And these computers take in all the information that's collected throughout the day. So all the current observations, wind speed, temperature, dew point, uh, humidity, barometric pressure, all that information is compiled into a computer. And then that computer uses that data and applies a lot of algorithms based on trends that it's noticed during the time that it's been collecting data. So it could be 30 years, it's had, it has 30 years worth of data, or it has uh, 40 years worth of data. And it figures out, based on that amount of time, this is what I think is going to happen from this point forward. Now, the tricky part is to determine whether the model is being biased. And that can get really tricky, especially when you're talking about winter weather or severe weather the long-term models sometimes have a hard time figuring out exactly where those tornadoes will set up or where the rain snow line will be. So long-term forecasting gets to be a little bit more tricky than short-term forecasting. For both of these types of forecasting though, sometimes it really does come down to your best guess. Granted, it's an educated guess, but sometimes it really is just a guess. And that'll do it for this edition of Weather 101. Thanks for watching everybody. Remember, if you have a weather-related question, just drop them in the comments section down below, and I'll try to answer them on another edition of Weather 101. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Weather101Net. Until next time, see ya!